that kind of cross-disciplinary work? Well, it takes, for me, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is it takes a mindset of both and. So it doesn't have to be either or. Uh, many of us, I came to get my own training because I was just so taken by the beauty of the arts. I was taken by the purity and the ability to learn how to not only express myself, but there was something related to um, uh, having, being authentic by being able to express myself with the arts. I don't ever want to lose that. But uh, you can have your cake and eat it too when it comes to the arts. So it isn't a zero-sum game where somebody wins and the other person loses, or we do it this way and that means we don't do it that, that way. Uh, this is about expressing the beauty of the arts and being inspired uh, by it and also having uh, its connections to all the different ways people are engaged with the arts, including other industries and other non-sector industries. And can you imagine what it would be like to have other sectors say, wait a minute, we cannot do without the arts. We are strong believers in the arts altogether, and we, um, we talk about it, and we communicate, and we can tell those effective stories, and we also measure it. But can you imagine what it's like also if other sectors say, wait a minute, we can't do without the arts. We need them at the table. They're actually showing us how to stand in the middle of ambiguity without shrinking back. They're showing us how to be a leader in complex times when there's different perspectives and we can, we can synthesize those. So I, that, is the, that is how I come to uh, thinking about uh, no, it isn't either or, and it's uh, will we swing this way or, or that way, and that means we lose the other way. We want to be able to be embracing the both and. And not everybody can do that, but we can. The arts can do that. I would agree with all of that, and I would just add to it a couple of things I learned along the trail. Um, I grew up here in Massachusetts, and the um, uh, got to got to connect with early on uh, uh, tribal organizations in Massachusetts, the Algonquins, or uh, the Lakota Sioux in my work, and other Native American organizations. And I learned along the way that most Native American uh, cultures have no word for art. They 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 don't even look at it as a separate thing. Um, they see it as a part of everything else in community, and uh, so art is in everything. And I, I think that, that art as a broad community value is exciting, and it doesn't take away from art in and of itself in those same tribal communities. So I look at it as inherent value, that's their instrumental, as you talked about, uh, is way, but what I think of it as is transformative. Um, the arts as a uh, integrated tool of being transformative to community and to all of these other issues in community. And, um, now, on the instrumental piece, though, I would say I learned a big lesson here in Massachusetts as well. 35 years ago when I was working on um, the State Arts Advocacy Organization here, we had a governor, a Republican, a Democratic governor, a conservative governor, King, who wrote that he was going to eliminate the budget, eliminate the budget for the Mass Council on the Arts. And um, we tried everything, arts, you know, inherent value arguments and so on. Um, transformative wasn't really talked about that much in those days. But what we finally found was the first economic impacts study that had been done, you know, by uh, our 